Although tram systems date to the late 19th and early 20th centuries, many old systems were closed during the mid-20th century because of the advent of automobile bus travel. This was especially the case in North America, but post-war reductions and shutdowns also occurred on British, French and other Western European urban rail networks. However, traditional tramway systems survived, and eventually even began to thrive from the late 20th century onward, some eventually operating as much as when they were first built over a century ago. Their numbers have been augmented by modern tramway or light rail systems in cities which had discarded this form of transport. Europe. Much tramway infrastructure was lost during the mid-20th century in many European cities, although not on the same scale as in other parts of the world such as North America. Most of Eastern Europe retained tramway systems until recently, but some cities are reconsidering their transport priorities. Some Western European cities are rehabilitating, upgrading, expanding and reconstructing old tramway lines, and many Western European towns and cities are building new tram lines. North America In North America, especially the United States, trams are generally known as streetcars or trolleys. A tram is a tourist trolley, an aerial tramway or a people mover. Streetcar lines were largely torn up during the mid-20th century for a variety of financial, technological and social reasons. Exceptions include New Orleans, Newark, Seattle, Philadelphia with a much smaller network than before, Boston and San Francisco. Pittsburgh kept most of its streetcar system, serving the city and many suburbs, until January 27, 1967, making it the longest-lasting large network U.S. streetcar system. Canada Most of the country's streetcar systems disappeared after World War II, giving way to buses, Windsor 1937 Kitchener Public Utilities Commission 1946 North Vancouver 1947 Nova Scotia Light and Power Company Limited Halifax 1949 Edmonton Radial Railway Saskatoon Municipal Railway and Hamilton Street Railway 1951 Vancouver 1955 Ottawa Transportation Commission and Montreal Tramways Company 1959 Toronto's system grew with the abandonment of streetcar operations in the United States and the rest of Canada, as the Toronto Transit Commission purchased cars from many former operators. The Toronto system grew to become the largest streetcar system in the Americas. During the late 20th century, several cities installed light rail systems partially along the same corridors as the streetcars. Some have restored their old streetcars and run them as a heritage ride for tourists, an example is the Vancouver Downtown Historic Railway. <laughs> Central America Panama Trams in Panama predate the country's founding. Tram service began in 1893 in Panama City, in what was then Colombia. The last old tram stopped operating in 1941. Panama Metro began operating the first subway in mainland Central America, a 12 station system, on April 5, 2014. Guatemala Metro Real is the name given to the light rail system proposed for Guatemala City. South America Argentina 
Buenos Aires, once known as the City of Trams, had one of the world's most extensive networks with over 857 kilometers, 535 miles of track. Most of it was dismantled during the 1960s in favor of bus transportation. The Anglo-Argentine Tramways Company opened Latin America's first underground tram system, Subta Line A, in 1913. The original route was underground and at street level until 1926, and pantograph cars—built by La Bourgeoise in Belgium, had low doors at the ends for boring from the street and high doors in the middle for boring from a tunnel platform. Subta Line A is arguably one of the continent's first light metros. The vintage carriages without the end doors remained in operation until 2013. Using Line A's surface non-revenue tracks in the Caballito neighborhood, the Asociación Amigos del Tranvía Friends of the Tramway Association operates a heritage streetcar service with restored tram and metro cars on weekends and holidays from the Polvoran workshop. The Tren de la Costa coastal train, a light rail service running on a right-of-way formerly used from 1891 to 1961, began in 1995. Serving tourists and commuters, it runs from the northern suburbs of Buenos Aires to Tigre along the Parana River for about 15 kilometres The Premetro E2 operates as a feeder at the end of Metro Line E in the western suburbs. In central Buenos Aires, the Tranvía del Este or Puerta Madero tramway was an experimental tramway which operated on a 2-kilometre route in the Puerta Madero district from 2007 to 2012 with a single-car Alstom Citadis tram—two cars during the first year—on loan from Madrid. Planned extensions did not come to fruition, and low ridership led to a decision to discontinue service. The 12.6 kilometers, 7.8 miles Metro Tranvía Mendoza, Mendoza Light Rail opened for regular service in the city of Mendoza in October 2012, operating on relayed tracks on a former Ferrocarril General San Martín mainline right of way with LRVs, light rail vehicles acquired from San Diego, California. Topic: Bolivia In 2020, Bolivia's first light rail network, known as Mi Tren, will begin operation. Topic: <inaudible> Brazil. Brazil has the largest light rail network in Latin America, with new systems under construction. Rio de Janeiro has the largest system, with three lines, 42 stations and 30 kilometres of rail lines. Santos, Maceo, Fortaleza, Recife, Cariri, Sobral and Cuiaba also have light rail. The city of Santos has a 12-kilometre line with 15 stations. Fortaleza has a 20-kilometre 10-station line. Recife has two lines with nine stations each and 32 kilometers 20 miles of track. Sobral has a 12 station, 14 kilometers 8.7 miles line. The nine station, 14 kilometer 8.7 miles. Cariri Light Rail connects the twin cities of Crato and Juazeiro do Norte. Maceo has a 15 station, 35 kilometer 22 miles line. Cuiaba, with two lines, 23 kilometers, 14 miles of track and 33 stations, is in the final stages of implementing its light rail system. Topic: <inaudible> Ecuador. The Ecuadorian city of Cuenca's first tram line will open in 2019. Asia Although tram systems were well established in Asia at the start of the 20th century, they began a steady decline during the mid to late 1930s. 
The 1960s marked the end of the continent's dominance in public transportation, with most major systems closed and their equipment and rail sold for scrap. However, extensive original lines remain in service in Hong Kong and Japan. There is rekindled interest in trams, with modern systems being built in South Korea, Japan, and the Philippines. Kolkata has Asia's oldest operating electric tram system, 36 routes, operating since 1902. The first Japanese tram line began in 1895 as the Kyoto Electric Railroad. The tram reached its zenith in 1932, when 82 rail companies operated 1,479 kilometers (919 miles) of track in 65 cities. Its popularity declined during the rest of the decade, a trend accelerated by the Pacific War, the occupation of Japan and the rebuilding years. Although many of the remaining tramways were shut down and dismantled in favor of auto, bus, and rapid rail service during the 1960s, the system remained extensive compared to that of the United States. Australasia. In Australasia, trams are used extensively only in Melbourne, all other major cities largely dismantled their networks by the 1970s. Adelaide retained one line which has been extended, and work on a new line is in progress. Sydney reintroduced tram service in 1997 on one new line which has been extended, with a second line scheduled to open in 2019. Ballarat, Bendigo, Christchurch and Auckland have reintroduced trams as heritage operations. The Gold Coast opened the G, Link, a new light rail line, in 2014, it was extended in 2017. The G, Link is the first tram light rail line to operate in Queensland since the closure of the Brisbane Tram Network in 1969. In 2017, Canberra was building its first light rail line. A distinctive feature of many classic Australasian trams was their early use of a lowered central section between bogies wheel sets, intended to make passenger access easier by reducing the number of steps required to reach the inside of the vehicle. Cars with this feature were known as, "...drop centers". Africa Egypt Although Cairo and Alexandria have historic systems which still exist, the once extensive Cairo urban system is nearly defunct. The express tram line to and within Masr El Jedida is still in operation. It is an example of a surviving interurban electric railway, the ancestor of light rail. A small 1970s system in the city of Helwan, 25 kilometers (16 miles) south, is still operational. Some of Cairo's cars are former Toronto Transit Commission PCC streetcars. Alexandria's urban system and express routes to its eastern suburbs are still in operation. The urban system operates yellow cars, including some acquired from Copenhagen, primarily on street track. The express system Ramler routes operates three-car blue trains, including some double-deck cars, on largely reserved track. There are also some dual-system routes. <laughs> Ethiopia In Ethiopia, construction by China Railway Group Limited was ongoing on Addis Ababa light rail in 2013. The Ethiopian Railway Corporation began construction of the 34.25 km double-track electrified light rail project in December 2011, funded by the Export-Import Bank of China. Initially, the system would have two lines. The project was expected to take three years to complete, and trial operations began in early 2015. Nigeria Abuja's light rail network began operation in 2018, the first of its kind in West Africa. Egypt 
Topic: Tunisia. Tunis had traditional trams until about 1960. A new light rail line began operation in 1985 and has been followed by other systems. Topic: South Africa. Public transport in South Africa began in Cape Town in May 1801, when a weekly coach service to Simons Town was announced. The Cape's first horse-drawn omnibus was introduced, based on George Shilbier's model. The Cape Town and Greenpoint Tramway Company was formed in September 1862, and began operations on April 1, 1863. Single and double-deck horse-drawn trams were used. Cape Town's electric tram system initially had ten cars which were built in Philadelphia. Lady Sivright, the wife of James Sivright, opened the new system on August 6, 1896. At the time of Queen Victoria's Diamond Jubilee in 1897, Cape Town and its suburbs had 32 electric trams running on about 23 miles of track. The new power station was inadequate, and had to be expanded. Tram service also existed in Pretoria, Durban and Johannesburg where the Rand Tram, the suburban railway to Boxburg, opened in 1890, but were replaced by petrol, diesel and trolleybus systems by the early 1960s. <laughs> <laughs> World's largest tram systems Topic. See also List of tram and light rail transit systems existing, regular public transit systems List of town tramway systems includes closed systems Notes